Hello, everyone. My name is Sheikh Houlihan, and I'm a senior in the School of Foreign Service studying international politics. And I just want to say that Georgetown University is great for a number of reasons, but not least of which um, for this fellowship and this particular opportunity. I'd like to thank the Berkeley Center um, for its wonderful support, and it's quite generous um, financial support in particular for, for research. I'd also like to thank Oche Campion Jesuit College in Gulu, Uganda, which was my host institution, my home, um, for three weeks in, in June. I'm here to talk about social justice and, and education at Oche Campion in, in Gulu. I was there this summer, um, as I mentioned, and I was there in a particular fashion because it's been about five years since the cessation of conflict and civil strife in northern Uganda. Until 2007, and roughly since the mid-1980s, um, Joseph Kony of the notorious Kony 2012 debacle earlier this year, um, Joseph Kony and the Lord's Resistance Army operated in northern Uganda, and in fact used northern Uganda and Gulu as a base to carry out attacks in South Sudan, Eastern DRC, and in the country of Uganda itself. My research question, um, especially studying at Oche, was how can education and social justice inform peace building in a recently post-conflict environment? And I say that because the Jesuits, being who they are, were vitally interested in going to where the need was greatest in Uganda. And so they built Oche Campion Jesuit College in Gulu, knowing that that was where the need was greatest. Just to give a little bit of background, um, as I mentioned, widespread civil strife and conflict um, was visited on northern Uganda, especially Gulu, between the 1980s and, and 2007. Some 1.8 million people were internally displaced, and some 30,000 children were actually abducted, many of whom were placed um, within Joseph Kony's armies. So we're talking about widespread um, human rights abuses. This has meaningful implications even five years after the conflict, as you can imagine, because children who are now 18 to 20 years old were born in the midst of conflict and until 2007 had only known conflict for all of their lives. And so when we think about education and social justice, um, there are very meaningful implications for, for how the Jesuits, or for that matter, state schools go about that. Oche Campion Jesuit College um, was started or at least the idea was germinated in 2005 when Jim Stoke, um, to your far left, and um, Father Tony Walk um, got together. Um, they had both been from the Wisconsin province of the Society of Jesus, and they were transferred to the East African province of the Society of Jesus. Both of them had been graduates of Campion Jesuit College in Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin. Um, they, they were both alumni there. And after that original Campion Jesuit High School closed in Wisconsin, they contacted a lot of alumni and said, you know, hey, it'd be great if we, would be, if we could start another Jesuit high school. And we're in Uganda now, and the need is very great. So that generosity from the United States and that philanthropic support, which raised $1.2 million, I might add, that, that, that generosity was met um, on the Ugandan side as well. Brothers Roger Ochin and Francis Okwira actually donated 98.5 acres of land. Um, I didn't know how big that was <laughs> until I went there, but it's a substantial part of land, and, and I'll, I'll show you why. But So this is where the idea came from. Now, my research question, as I said, looked at education and social justice informing peace building in a recently post-conflict environment. And I've discovered over the course of that investigation that it informs peace building in two significant fora. One is formal, formal education and the other is informal education. In formal education, um, talking about classes, um, Oche actually sponsors a liberal arts education, as you might expect from a Jesuit institution, but it also sponsors vocational training. Um, farming, which is the main industry in northern Uganda. Not only farming, but also textile. There, there's one classroom out of about eight classrooms in total. One classroom is entirely devoted to, to sewing machines. Um, 
So really, the Jesuits, at least in this case, are trying to combine liberal arts education with um, on-the-ground practical vocational training as well. Education matters in this way um, for resiliency. One of the studies I came across over the course of my research um, from Kate Burge, 2010, found that coping strategies um, by recent combatants matters for how these individuals are able to get new jobs or adjust to relocation. Education, formal education matters for generating the types of skills that can be transferred to a different situation, and especially in a post-conflict environment. Formal ed education also matters in, in other unobvious ways. Um, Brother Godfrey Maserica, who is the, the Dean of Students, noted that it is difficult to manipulate an educated person. Um, he was talking in the context of local politicians, which he happened to find corrupt. He said education, being able to um, convince people who know how to read or write, it looks very different than trying to convince people who don't know how to read or write. John Mary Caragua, who was another teacher, noted that at Oche, they tried to create a, a culture of life because when 30,000 children have been abducted and when many of them have been used as child soldiers, oftentimes life is spent as a, as a very common currency. And so there is a less respect for life um, than you might find elsewhere. Again, we're talking about families that had been, each family that I met had been directly affected by, by the violence, by one or more family members either being killed or being abducted or being used in some way by the Lord's Resistance Army or by the government for that matter. Another form which is significant is, is informal education. And in this way, I looked at social justice and how it is taught at Oche. Music, dance, and drama is a vibrant part of life in Southern Central Africa um, for many, many children, many youth. At Oche, music, dance, and drama, MDD, um, was practiced by Undugu family which is a group that originally started in Kenya by another Jesuit, Stephen Maselli, um, who is trying to promote fraternity and, and familyhood, which is what Undugu means, and it's a Swahili word. word. At, at Oche, I found um, almost peace and reconciliation sessions that went on. And we're not talking about where everyone sat in a circle and, and shared their thoughts. We're talking about sports and games and regular childhood activities but done expressly for the purpose of, of bringing children together. And not just children from northern Uganda, but children from all over the country. Because Oche tries to attract children from southern Uganda, from Kampala, from Imbarara. And all of this matters again. So, because of time constraints, I'll, I'll leave you with a few takeaways. I mentioned the, the fact that Oche tries to recruit students from every region in Uganda. And that's important because there are serious regional divides between the North and South. I met um, Nurse Susan Aka, who actually mentioned that she personally blames um, Yohiri Museveni, the president of Uganda, for cutting off Northern Uganda from Southern Uganda. Um, in the late 1990s, it's reported, and to some significant extent substantiated, that the government tried to cut off the, the main artery, the main road between Kampala and Gulu. And this wasn't to, um, in an effort to, to try to ameliorate the violence. It was an effort to, to separate the violence, to effectively contain the LRA and Joseph Kony in the North. And she still, Nurse Susan still personally blames President Museveni for that. And that's just one example of, of many examples I found where, where there's a serious ethnic and tribal divide between the North and South. And Oche is trying to ameliorate that, like I said, um, by bringing students together, by, by teaching them in the same classrooms, by having them sleep in the same dormitories. All of it mattered. Oche's target audience, um, well, the target constituency is bright but low-income students, which I, I can't emphasize how, how significant that is, given that the Ugandan government has instituted universal primary education in the late 90s, but state schools are, are very poorly managed, and there's something less than two pennies, is two SUS pennies are spent on, on students. 
And the fact that the Jesuits intentionally subsidize education for every single one of their 240 students, and in fact subsidizing entire education for 30% of that students, for 30% of those students rather, all of that matters. And finally, um, I'd just like to leave you with, with this idea that, that education and, and social justice in this particular post-conflict environment is centered around empower, empowerment and, and student empowerment. Not everyone that I met in northern Uganda, and especially not everyone in Gulu that I met, was, was a victim. And oftentimes when, when you're looking at, at child soldiers and when you're talking about these very, very serious issues, um, there's a tendency to focus on the victimhood of these people. And at least in this case, Oche in the Society of Jesus is very concerned about focusing on their empowerment instead. Thank you very much.